The parents of more than 28 million children could soon have a big decision to make. An FDA advisory panel today voted to recommend that the Food and Drug Administration grant emergency use authorization of Pfizer's vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. Before voting, the panel heard from those advocating for authorization and those concerned about possible side effects. We can protect our school-aged children immediately and further shield them from short and long-term physical and mental health consequences. Please do not assume that this vaccine is safe in our children until all data, including long-term data, has been carefully evaluated. The White House says it already has enough Pfizer doses to vaccinate every eligible child. Those doses will begin going to pharmacies and pediatricians offices as soon as the decision is finalized, and that could be as soon as next week. Yesterday at 5, we told you about Moderna's vaccine for children. That drug maker says its shot is safe and effective for children 6 to 11. Moderna says it will seek approval in the coming weeks, and we have much more on this latest vaccine news right now on our Channel 3000 News app. It is free and available in the App Store. Well, take a look at this map. A lot of red around the state of Wisconsin, but one county now in orange. Of course, that would be Dane County, now the only county in the state not seeing a high level of coronavirus spread. The CDC's updated numbers drop the county from high transmission to substantial. In Dane County, the only one in the state, of course, also with a countywide indoor mask mandate. The current order, though, set to expire next week. Now, Dane, also the most vaccinated county in Wisconsin. Nearly 72% of people in the county are fully vaccinated. And that drops drastically when looking at the entire state. Just under 55% of people in the whole state of Wisconsin have finished their vaccination series. And more COVID trouble for the Green Bay Packers. Wide receiver Alan Lazard has been placed on the reserve COVID list. The NFL Network reporting Lazard was a close contact and is unvaccinated, meaning he is out five days. Yesterday, the Packers learned defensive coordinator Joe Barry and star wide receiver Devontae Adams had both tested positive for the virus. Green Bay heads to Arizona to play the undefeated Cardinals on Thursday night. To weather now, meteorologist Dana Fulton is outside with your certified most accurate forecast. Dana? It has been quite a nice day for us, guys. A lot of sunshine and really comfortable temperatures. Sunset just about an hour away and I might just spend the next hour out here on the patio right now. It feels so great. Here's a live look over Madison, a clear blue sky overhead. Uh, barely any clouds popping up for us today. 53 currently in Madison with dew points in the mid to low 30s. Our breeze staying pretty light in the single digits coming in from the east northeast. With our clear sky overnight, temperatures will drop pretty quickly after sunset. but won't cool down quite as much. Overnight low temperatures will trend in the mid to upper 30s. Our Doppler track is nice and quiet throughout most of the state, but we look off to the west. That line of showers and a little bit of snow mixed in is steadily pushing east. By the time it gets to us, though, we're just looking at rain passing through, but it is going to lead to quite a soggy Thursday. We'll take a closer look at your full forecast in just a few minutes. I reacted to what was given to me at the time from PD and in the voice, and uh, there was a uh, uh, hit the emergency button and the emergency button activated out, and we are working through those protocols to make sure that it doesn't happen again. We will learn from this. That is the message today from Stoughton High School's principal after he incorrectly put his school into a lockdown yesterday morning. Now this all started when Stoughton police informed the district of an armed person in the area of the high school, but police say they only contacted the school after they had arrested that person and said there was no threat. Brad Hamilton live from the high school tonight with how students are feeling today. Brad? Chaos is how one student described yesterday's muffed lockdown, and we got a chance to hear his perspective on what was a scary Monday morning. Michael Driftkey was in band class when an Alice alarm sounded from the school's PA system. We were just running all over the place, not knowing what to do. If you're not familiar with Alice, it's a federally endorsed safety protocol used at schools to protect students and staff during an active or imminent threat. Alice stands for alert, lockdown, inform, counter, and evacuate. At about 10.20 a.m., Stoughton Principal Mike Cruz made the decision to activate Alice, believing an armed person was near the school grounds. I wasn't especially scared for my own life. I was just concerned about why there's like no communication of where he is and what we're supposed to do. 
The lockdown would last an hour long, and it was a measure that wasn't needed, as law enforcement says they only contacted Stoughton school officials after this armed person was already in custody and was no threat to the school. In a school board meeting last night, Principal Mike Cruz, who decided to put the school in its full Alice lockdown, says he is very thankful everyone is okay and that they will learn from this experience. People are concerned, and, 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 they, and they care, and... Uh, We'll make it better in the future for the system of justice. But Michael Drifke, who's just a freshman, hopes that change comes quickly. Say if the guy was actually uh, uh, like on our school premises with a loaded gun, uh, that it could have ended horribly. Well, we just received an email from Molly Shea, who's the Community Information and Resources Coordinator. And I'm sorry, I, I just want you to, to hear this message, so I'm just going to read off my phone. Hi, we just recently issued an apology to our school community. We've begun an investigation to look into all the details of the response and make adjustments for the future. Again, you heard there will be an investigation going on into yesterday's Alice situation. We're going to keep you up to date with the latest information and the entire state that we just now received. Reporting live in Stoughton tonight, Brad Hamilton, News 3 Now. All right, Brad, thank you. And in the past hour, the Wisconsin Assembly passed a package of Republican-sponsored bills to create more affordable housing for workers. GOP lawmakers say the bills will reduce regulation and reform outdated practices. They were pitched as a way to make Wisconsin an attractive state for workers. Also at the Capitol, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss says Republicans may need more subpoenas for their investigation into the 2020 election. At a news conference, Speaker Voss said it's possible he'll try to force the state's top election official to submit to an interview with former Supreme Court Justice Michael Gableman. Gableman's contract allots $676,000 in taxpayer money for this investigation. Part of Justice Gableman's investigation has been focusing on what WEC is doing um, and also looking at how they interacted with the clerks and the local leaders uh, in the cities where they absorbed the money from the Zuckerberg organization, in my opinion, uh, totally wrong. So. Yes. Attorney General Josh Call sued last week in an attempt to block the subpoenas. The judge has set a December 23rd hearing date on that matter. It has been two months since the national eviction moratorium came to an end, and eviction filings here in Dane County are rising. But even when a judge dismisses an eviction, that is not the end of the story for some tenants, as Naomi Coles explains. Naomi? I've been talking to lawyers with the University of Wisconsin Evictions Defense Clinic. They tell me evictions are rising, particularly outside of the city of Madison. Now, I spoke to one of the first clients that the new clinic represented. Silvia Rodriguez has lived at her home in Fitchburg for eight years until she says a couple late rent payments during the pandemic prompted her landlord to not renew the lease and then file an eviction. Now, even with the eviction dismissed, she's afraid to say but can't find suitable new housing because her current landlord tells prospective apartments that she's a bad tenant. I'm just afraid now that I've seen what they can do to me. I haven't been able to sleep because of the worry that I had to move us out of here somehow, but I didn't have a place to go. Sylvia says she's speaking out now because others are in her shoes and she wants justice for both them and herself. At 6 o'clock, join me for the full investigative report as I explain her predicament, how her lawyer says this falls into a wider pattern, and how her landlord claims a far different story of what's going on. That I watch this going on, and it's like um, it's like the Seinfeld presidency. It's a presidency about nothing. I mean, what what is this? What's going on here with this negotiation? That's Senator Mitt Romney saying the Biden administration isn't getting anything done on its agenda. The president's still locked in final negotiations on his Build Back Better plan, hoping this is the week it starts to move through Congress. Doing big things in Congress is always hard, but we didn't choose elected office just to pursue the easy things. We came here to do the hard things, the important things, the things that will impact Americans. President Biden leaves for his second major international trip as president in just two days. His first stop will be Friday in Rome for the Group of 20 summit. Before that, he'll head to Vatican City to meet with Pope Francis. President Biden is a lifelong member of the Catholic Church. White House officials say the pair will discuss a number of important issues. New at five, at least five former Trump administration staffers have voluntarily spoken with the House Committee investigating 
investigating the January 6th riots at the U.S. Capitol. Attorneys working for the committee have reached out to dozens of Trump aides to see if they would speak without the threat of a subpoena. Former DOJ official Jeffrey Clark is expected to testify before the lawmakers on Friday. A man accused of attacking a D.C. police officer on January 6th will be released from jail this week. Thomas Seibick has been in jail since being arrested in March. He pleaded not guilty to 10 federal crimes. A federal judge says he earned a pretrial release by apologizing for his actions and distancing himself from other Capitol rioters. Still ahead at 5, why Badgers are rolling up their sleeves ahead of homecoming. Plus, saving children's lives during cardiac arrest. How new technology is doing that will tell you how it works and how EMS in our area are being trained. And then coming up tonight at 6, we'll check out a local Halloween display going all out this year and tell you about the person it's celebrating. And small gains today at Wall Street. The Dow picks up almost 16. The S&P finished up 8. The NASDAQ adds 9. And we'll be right back. A celebration of life, love, laughter, and... Fiddler on the Roof. At Overture Center, November 16th through 21st. Tickets at Overture.org. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUV of the future for everyone. Ford Explorer, America's best-selling SUV, with available seating for up to seven passengers and available terrain management system. Because the SUV of the future isn't built for a few, it's built for America. Ford Explorer, drive one today. Now lease an Explorer XLT for just $389 a month, only at your Wisconsin and UP Ford dealers. At U.S. Cellular, we know the local landscape, so we can help everyone stay connected for less. And less also means more, as in more choice. While the other guys may limit your options, at U.S. Cellular, you choose any phone and we make it free. That's right. Visit our store and any phone you see is free. Plus, get unlimited data for $30 a month and get the most out of our state-of-the-art network, wherever you choose to go. U.S. Cellular, America's locally grown wireless. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Call to donate today. 40 years of winners and readers. It's Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Taste Party. Monday, November 15th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Edgewater. Sample food and drinks, enjoy music, and meet some of this year's winners. It's Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Taste Party. Monday, November 15th at the Edgewater. Tickets are online now. Presenting sponsor, Wollersheim Winery and Distillery. And supporting sponsors, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and Beef Butter Barbecue. A celebration of life, love, laughter, and Fiddler on the Roof. At Overture Center, November 16th through 21st. Tickets at Overture.org. The UW Eviction Defense Clinic helps a Fitchburg mom's eviction get dismissed, but now she wants out. Tonight, Naomi Coles investigates why the landlord is making it an impossible situation, why this is now a broader issue. UW Athletics and the Goodman Community Center need your help to provide Thanksgiving meals for 4,000 families. Please consider a food or monetary gift. We're grateful for any gift you can provide. Donate at GoodmanCenter.org. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Well, the Grinch is already out in lacrosse, responsible for vandalizing the city's rotary lights display. Yesterday, work crews found 70 damaged electrical pedestals and stolen cords as well. Organizers say volunteers moved those pedestals to Riverside Park in lacrosse last Friday. Replacement costs are estimated at 10 grand. U.S. consumers are feeling pretty good about spending money just in time for the holiday shopping season. The Consumer Confidence Index rose to 113.8 points this month. That reverses a three-month downward trend. It was highest back in July, nearly 
half of Americans surveyed say they plan on taking a vacation as well in the next six months. That's its highest level since before the pandemic. It might cost you a little bit more to ship with UPS. Beginning next year, UPS announced an annual rate increase of 5.9% today for 2022. The company's operating profit has risen nearly $3 billion, up from 22%, up 22% from last year. And that makes this year the shipping giant's biggest year ever, even before the holiday shopping season. UW-Madison is encouraging students to literally bleed red and white this homecoming week. The American Red Cross hosting a blood drive this afternoon on campus. Organizers say it's important that students know what the life-saving habit of giving blood, especially during the current emergency shortage. All participating donors today received a Red Cross t-shirt. What a lot of people don't realize is with this blood shortage that we're currently in, they're really shutting down elective surgeries and procedures throughout the country. And the drive will continue in the Gordon Dining Center through Thursday, but the Red Cross still asking for anyone to donate blood if they can, especially those with type O. You can learn how to make an appointment to donate at redcrossblood.org. A life-saving technology to save people in cardiac arrest is now available for children in our area. UW Health is working with local first responders to help them recognize when children as young as 13 qualify for the new technology. It's called East CMO. It works by acting in the place of a patient's heart to keep blood flowing throughout their body. Really important for us to be able to train on these activities and educate our people, test the systems, the integration between two different systems, because these things don't happen terribly often, and when they do, they are most critical. Officials say the technology could be used year-round for instances when children suffer from hypothermia or possibly accidental overdose on medications. Rain coming in batches today in the Northeast, part of the season's first fall nor'easter in New York City. Mayor Bill de Blasio says custodial staff spent the night in hundreds of city schools to protect them from flooding. Governors of both New York and New Jersey declared states of emergency before the storm. For a closer look at that in our local forecast, here's meteorologist Dana Fulton. Dana? A lot of rain coming through the New England area right now. As we take a look at this rotating system, you can see still seeing steady showers, some lightning and thunderstorms mixed in as well, uh, stretching across several states for us. This area has just been soaked with rain in the last 48 hours. Some areas close to downtown New York City picking up almost three and a half inches of rain. This just slowly populating, as you can see, uh, the system really tracking across the map here, uh, pulling that system across through the New England area over the last two days. So this is currently impacting some major metro areas for us in the northeast, but also bringing a lot of heavy rainfall throughout the Midwest. So uh, everyone could use a little bit of a, a dry out at this point. Shake off the water just a little bit as we start to move into the end of the week and the weekend. While they all start to see some drier weather, for us right now things are dry. We are looking at our next system off to the west building in. Right now there is some light snow and rainfall for parts of Wyoming and stretching into the Dakotas and Nebraska this evening. That is still well off to the west, but it is going to continue to build into our area and impact us as we look ahead to the middle of the week. For the next at least 24 hours or so, plan on things staying fairly dry outside. The center of the system is going to drag uh, right over the plains and move towards Wisconsin, bringing that rainfall in once we get to late overnight Wednesday and into Thursday. It does feel like October outside with our temperatures. Again, the rain chances will extend for us late overnight Wednesday heading into Thursday. So I want to take a broader look at this first. The rainfall right now well off to the west where we're seeing some steady showers into late Wednesday. It almost hits a, a blocking effect for us throughout the late evening hours Wednesday and into Thursday morning. Those showers will continue east and finally build in late in the day Thursday and bring us a bit of a soggy into Thursday and into Friday morning. Once it all pulls off to the east, we'll see a clearing sky late Friday night heading into Halloween weekend. Rainfall totals will certainly be highest off to the west where that blocking effect kind of locks in for us. By Friday, our rainfall totals trending closer to about a, a half of an inch of accumulation. Mostly clear for us this evening. Tomorrow, skies will become mostly cloudy. We'll have a slight chance for a shower Wednesday night, mainly to the west before more rainfall builds in during the day on Thursday and brings us quite a soggy afternoon and evening heading into Friday. High temperatures for tomorrow in the upper 50s against skies will become mostly cloudy. It's going to be pretty mild outside for this time of year. Upper 50s for us on Wednesday, mid to upper 50s continuing 
towards Saturday for Saturday and Halloween. Sunday, mostly sunny skies, high temperatures in the 50s, overnight lows trending back down into the 30s for the start of next week. That's going to be a pretty dry trend for next week for the start of November. High temperatures trending fairly close to average and overnight lows just at freezing or just a, a smidge below starting to get to those chilly, chilly nights for us. Uh, a few delays along the Beltline right now, but no accidents to report, which is certainly good news. And the interstate, we aren't seeing any major uh, backups east for north and southbound on 39 and 90. From the Beltline to Janesville, 25 minutes, 16 minutes to get from Middleton to Sauk City and downtown to Sun Prairie. 18 minutes this evening. That's a quick look at traffic. All right, Dana, thank you. The investigation into last week's movie set shooting is uncovering several red flags. We'll tell you what we're learning after the break. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. That's bad news for the credit card companies, but it's great news for you. We're Credit Associates, and we're offering you free information on how to completely resolve your credit card debt with a monthly payment you can afford. To see how much you can save, call now. 1-800-914-7929. Don't declare bankruptcy. Don't consolidate. Give us 10 minutes, and we could save you thousands. After all, we depend on your success and offer a guarantee so there's no risk to call. Credit Associates. Live better debt-free. We'll even show you how to use your stimulus money to jumpstart our services and get you debt-free faster than you ever thought possible. Call Credit Associates now to see how much you could save for free. Call 1-800-914-7929. Don't you wish you could wave a magic wand and have whiter teeth? Well, you can, but it's not magic. It's power swaps. Just swab your teeth for five minutes and boom, whiter teeth and a better smile. And since you're not dealing with messy trays or awkward strips, you're less vulnerable to the harsh sensitivity they sometimes create. I've used strips. They seem to really hurt my teeth. The power swabs, it just seemed very gentle. It's so simple and easy. You just open it, you apply it to your teeth, you forget it's there. And I notice that they're white and bright again like they were before. I I noticed actually a difference the first time that I used power swabs. You put on the first coat and then the activator goes on and immediately you start seeing it working. It only takes five minute applications to get a brighter, whiter smile with power swabs. You just snap, swab and smile. Power swabs have been clinically studied to whiten natural teeth and remove stains from caps, crowns and veneers. It's so powerful, it removes stains from coffee, tea, red wine and even smoking. I love my coffee in the morning. I will never stop drinking coffee. I will not be the person drinking hot coffee with a straw. As much coffee as I drink, I can use my power swabs and eliminate the staining. When I used the power swabs, I applied it directly to my front tooth where the coffee stain was. I like being able to individually get the teeth, and most importantly, it got kind of in between the grooves. You can put it directly on the stain that you see on your teeth, and it's so precise. But as powerful as it is, it's also gentle and causes zero to minimal sensitivity. This didn't sting, it didn't burn, it didn't have an aftertaste. It was just a swab and I just got to rub it on my teeth and that was it. Take it from me as someone who has gone the dental route but has also gone on the shelf route and I've not really seen anything work as effective and as easy as power swabs. Whiten your teeth today by ordering power swabs and receive 40% off the regular price. Shipping is free plus you receive a free quick stick pen to use on the go after meals or a cup of coffee. Visit powerswabs.com or call the number on your screen. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for Overall Excellence in Television. Family members are identifying one of the shooting victims at an Idaho mall as a mall security guard. Two people were killed, five others hurt when a man opened fire inside, fire inside that mall. Boise's mayor thanking the shopkeepers who sprung into action after shots rang out, saying 
They possibly saved dozens of lives. We're learning new information tonight about the investigation into the deadly shooting on the set of an Alec Baldwin movie in New Mexico. The actor fired a prop gun last week, accidentally killing a cinematographer and wounding a director. But there are new concerns now about, about what happened before the shooting and whether industry rules on gun safety were followed. CBS News' Omar Villafranca is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Knock yourself out. Yes, sir. ABC's cop drama, The Rookie, announced it will stop filming with live guns immediately following the death of Helena Hutchins on the set of Rust last week. Now, others in entertainment are demanding similar action, including Shannon Lee, the daughter of Hollywood icon Bruce Lee and sister of Brandon Lee. Gentlemen! Who was killed by a prop gun on the set of The Crow in 1993. When you heard about what happened, what did it bring you back to? It's just such a maddening thing to have happened, you know, because it's tragic and it's horrible, and yet it, it didn't need to happen. Dutch Merrick, an armorer and prop master with 25 years of experience, says industry regulations on firearms are supposed to keep sets safe. So over 100 years, Firearms use in motion picture and television has actually gotten safer and safer. Merrick says if the testimony described in affidavits is correct, particularly if the assistant director, Dave Halls, handled the gun instead of the armorer, it suggests Hollywood rules were not being followed. CBS News has learned Halls was fired from a movie in 2019 after a gun unexpectedly went off on set. According to reports, that gun had been declared cold, meaning unable to fire. Court documents say Halls allegedly shouted cold gun upon giving the prop gun to Baldwin on the set of Rust. Ultimately, Merrick says, that shooting should never have been allowed to happen. Anything in the normal chain of operations that we do day in and day out in Hollywood would have prevented that. We've repeatedly reached out to Halls for comment but have not heard back. We should learn more about the case when the sheriff and the DA hold a press conference on Wednesday. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Santa Fe, New Mexico. We'll get a final check of your first warn forecast when we come back. If you're suffering from erectile dysfunction, Peak Performance for Men has a natural solution that can help you today. That's right. Stop wasting money on pills and inferior technology that hurts and just masks your ED. Fix it for good. The best part? Our ED treatment is non-invasive, painless, and you can get back to your natural functionability after just a few short in-office sessions. Call us today and mention this ad and your initial consultation is free. We are Madison's trusted specialist and only national erectile dysfunction provider. Call Peak Performance for Men today that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. But you still need to see your dentist because getting good dental care is important to your overall health. You know dental bills can take a big bite out of your budget, especially if you're retired or on Medicare. Even a simple cleaning can cost $200. And other procedures like crowns and root canals can cost hundreds, even thousands more. But affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company can help. Give us a call or go online for this free information kit with all the details. This isn't just a discount plan. This is real dental insurance that can help pay for over 350 covered procedures, like cleanings, fillings, crowns, even dentures. There are no deductibles no annual maximum, and you can see any dentist you like. So don't wait. Call now or go online for your free information kit from Physicians Mutual. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. There are lots of people who are confused about which Medicare plan is right for them. Hey, that's me. I barely know where to start. Well, start here with me, Karen. I'm a licensed Humana sales agent. Well, it's nice to meet you, Karen. I'm John Smith. Hi, John. At Humana, we know you're unique, so you have different needs from other John Smiths. Yeah, I've always thought so. And together, we can find a plan that's right for you. Great. I go to the doctor a couple of times a year, and I have some prescriptions, but I'm never fully sure of what's covered and what's not. With Humana's all-in-one Medicare Advantage plans, you get coverage for hospital stays, doctor visits, and Part D prescription drug benefits, all for an affordable and sometimes no monthly plan premium. Do you have any more information? Sure. I'll get a decision guide in the mail to you today. They're free. Finally, someone who understands the real me. Call or go online now to get your free decision guide. Call a licensed Humana sales agent today. Humana, a more human way to healthcare. 
Save today on Menard's great selection of outdoor power equipment. Our experts are here to help you choose exactly what you need. Get outside and power through the cold quickly and effortlessly with a Briggs & Stratton snowblower. With many models and features to choose from, you'll be equipped to take on whatever Mother Nature throws at you. Save today with 11% off all Briggs & Stratton snowblowers now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. We've got a packed broadcast for you tonight. Millions under flood warnings after a powerful nor'easter brings heavy wind and record-breaking rainfall to parts of the Northeast. And could there be another nor'easter on the way? Plus, in the hot seat, social media executives are grilled over the dangers posed to children, from the TikTok challenges to allegations of drugs being sold on Snapchat. And Heroes on the Water, how the ocean is helping women warriors heal from the wounds of war. That's coming up on the CBS Evening News. Before we leave you tonight at five, <laughs> newborns in the neonatal intensive care units at Unity Point Health Merit are all <laughs> look at them are getting into the Halloween spirit. The NICU is holding its annual Halloween costume contest. The picture with the most likes by noon on Saturday will win a prize, and you can find all of the adorable costumes on Meritor's <laughs> Facebook page. Oh, they're so priceless. They're well, all winners. Yeah, they are Aww. really cute, aren't they? Well, we're hoping for a little bit better weather for Halloween. It's looking actually, compared to some Halloweens we've had, not too bad. It really doesn't look too bad at all. Sunshine and cool but seasonable temperatures for tomorrow. Cloud coverage will increase with rain showers building in Wednesday night into Thursday. Scattered showers for Thursday into Friday morning and then some clearing possible late in the day Friday. Sunshine returns for Saturday. We'll hold on to that sunshine for Halloween Sunday with highs in the 50s and overnight lows. Of course, dropping once we get the sunset for Halloween. For next week, the start of November, dry weather and cool temperatures ahead. Dana, thanks. We're back in 30 minutes for News Now at 6. CBS Evening News is next. Stay tuned.